from Mount Glorious in South East Queensland, Australia. Welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by our friends at Wiggle. Now coming up, are bike helmets actually just a distraction from the bigger issue? We talked to one of the scientists behind the most quoted pieces of research on the subject. Yeah, we have cycling shorts in cycling shorts for once, a giant bike, literally a giant bike, and news of more new bike paths in the Netherlands. Well, you can never have too many bike paths, I suppose. No, clearly. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that sometimes technique just doesn't really matter. Here is top cross rider Beth Crompton showing that momentum and a little bit of luck is all you really need. Go on, Beth! Oh! oh look at that! That's insane! That. You never taught me that descending technique. Well, that to is unorthodox, Emma, definitely. Can we just rewind a little bit? Just to yeah, behold it there. Look at that pose. That takes a lot of core strength yeah. and a lot of gumption, I would well, say. Well, it does look like a yoga pose, doesn't yeah. it? Look at those feet. Like flying fish or something. Genius, yeah, love it, amazing. that's fantastic. We, we also learnt from Cyclos what happens if you have momentum but no luck. Ooh, that's Matt Exley there getting it a little bit wrong. Uh, now, we also learned this week that one of the hottest debates in cycling... Oh, sock length, presumably. No, not sock length this week, oh. actually. Uh, no, whether or not we should have to wear helmets when riding around town has been well and truly stoked once again. But there's a growing feeling that underneath this increasingly bitter argument, perhaps we're just being distracted from a bigger issue. A decade ago, an academic based at Bath University here in the UK conducted a piece of research that looked into the behaviour patterns of car drivers in relation to cyclists. And specifically, it looked into whether the behaviour changes depending on whether the cyclist was wearing normal clothes or lycra, whether they were male or female, or whether they were wearing a helmet or not. The take home from it was that drivers do give more room when they're overtaking to riders that look less experienced, whilst with more experienced looking riders, they pass far closer. So people that are wearing Lycra or a helmet. Yeah, now much of that research has been backed up by other people time and again, but the helmet part has not. Now apparently no further studies have been carried out, but a team of Australian researchers actually looked into Walker's original data set and they concluded something different. They concluded that car drivers did not pass closely to cyclists who were wearing helmets. Since then though, the author of the original study has published a rebuttal in which he says that the Australian team changed their interpretation of the data. So going from drivers pass closer to drivers pass close. Now therefore the original conclusion is still valid. Cyclists that wear helmets are treated differently and in a way that poses more of a risk to their safety. Yeah, interesting. Now we caught up with Dr Walker. Let's hear from him now. When we did the first study, and we found that drivers appeared to be getting closer when I wore a helmet, there were two possible explanations that came up. So the first was um, the one that I hoped wasn't true, which is maybe people were thinking, you know, he's, he's got a helmet on, if I hit him it's okay. Uh, or they were taking the helmet as a sign of a skilled, experienced rider. Uh, so the second study we did was actually deliberately testing that. We had uh, my colleague riding around either looking very experienced in like full-on racing gear or uh, dressed as a real novice cyclist with novice cyclist written across his back just to try and get that message across. And we found that that made no difference whatsoever. Really? Yeah. So that suggests that actually maybe people weren't taking the outfit as a sign of experience and being kind to the novice. Maybe they actually were getting closer when I wore the helmet because, you know, regrettably, they thought, maybe it doesn't matter too much. Crikey, so uh, I guess to a certain extent there's a, there is a slight positive here in that, that drivers do change their behaviour mm. depending on what they're seeing, mm. but then the downside is that you know, some of that behaviour is, is putting the cyclist at increased risk, isn't it? Yeah, we saw that again in the second study as well, where one of the outfits we tested suggested that, uh, had a, a vest with uh, writing on the back suggesting that the journey was being video recorded. And that was the only outfit that made any difference. Really? And got you a bit more space. So again, it suggests that drivers are capable of picking things up and responding, 
but maybe not in the way that we'd want. It kind of feels a little bit like maybe we as cyclists are in catch-22 at the moment, in that if we take steps to try and improve our personal safety, i.e. Like wearing a helmet or wearing high vis, then actually it might be having the opposite effect to the one that we actually are desiring. So what can we do, do you think, to actually try and improve the situation? Probably the best thing is to try and get at the root of the problem. Um, there's several ways you might get hurt as a cyclist. You know, you might lose it on a bend on a wet road, which I've done quite recently. Yeah. Um, but that's probably not going to kill me or seriously injure me. What's more likely to be a genuine threat to my life is dangerous motoring. Uh, big heavy vehicles cutting in on me, uh, cutting across me without looking in the case of HGVs. So if you want to fix that problem, you want to fix the real problem that actually threatens you, a helmet's not going to do that. What is going to do it is removing the danger. So as a cyclist, we can't just magically wave a wand and make trucks disappear out of city centres or, or make, wave a wand and make drivers put their phones down. But what we can do is push our local authorities, push our councillors, push our elected representatives to show them that this is serious and that they're, they're, they're presiding over a system that isn't fundamentally safe and that there are dangers in our streets that could be taken away if they were taken a bit more seriously. And so, so what might you envisage then as, as, the, as the next steps for a, you know, a council or an authority to do it? It would be segregated bike paths, I guess, so you separate cyclists from, from the dangers, or would it be you know, trying to remove the you know, trucks from cities? I mean, that would be a fairly yeah. Drastic measure, I guess. Well, it's a bit of everything. So uh, there's definitely some physical stuff. So if we've got physically separated space with the motor vehicles over there, they can't hurt you. It doesn't require all the drivers in the country to buy into the idea that they need to be safe. So that's kind of the gold standard. But we're never going to have that everywhere. You know, you and I commute in on rural roads. Um, you know, we can't have physically segregated space all through the countryside, all through the entire nation. So we also need changes in driver behaviour. And so that probably means a greater chance of being caught and punished if you are an aggressive, dangerous driver. It probably means that people need to get the message that it's not okay to speed, it's not okay to drive while distracted. So we need fundamental changes in our city streets, but also in the way people drive. What a fascinating bloke and quite an ironic name, Ian Walker, because actually it seems like he cycles a lot. In fact, he even won the North Cape 4000 this year. He did, yeah, that ultra endurance race. Also important to note, uh, he's got no agenda in the helmet debate. He said he wears a helmet when he rides his bike uh, recreationally, but he doesn't always wear one when he's riding around town. So there you go, he's got a foot in both camps. Anyway, make sure you get involved in the comment section down below. Let us know what you think about this particular issue. Are helmets distracting us from the bigger issue or should we focus on our own personal safety first? Let us know in the comment section. It's time now for your weekly inspiration. It's that part of the show where we get to go through some of the amazing photos that you've sent in over the last week. And we also get to give out some vouchers courtesy of Wiggle. Third place gets £50, second place gets £75, and first place gets a whopping £100 voucher, which is pretty cool. Yep, now in third place this week, we've got UK based Nick Cox, who ticked this photo when he's out in Alcudia in Mallorca. How do you say it? Alcudia or Mallorca. There we go. Anyway, that, is a, that is a cracker of a photo. Look at that. And do you know what? Yeah. Particularly inspiring for me, not just because we can actually see the sun, which I haven't seen for, for a few <laughs> days now, uh, but also because it's one of those destinations for European cyclists that's just so easy to get to, isn't it? And the roads yeah. are so good. I just kind of yep. think, oh, I can just go over there. Yeah, it doesn't take long to get there. It's so warm, the coffee is so good. Yeah. I almost feel actually that we shouldn't give Nick a £50 voucher because he's already had a load of riding in Mallorca. It doesn't yeah. need it any no. better. But anyway, there we yeah. go, Nick. Lucky Nick. We didn't. We realised that yeah. too late. Uh, right, second place. We've got this sent in by Sam Buchley. Was that right? That was right, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Uh, who is based in Bern in Switzerland. And now this one, I think, is pretty good for now because that looks like a very wintry shot. Yeah. And it's still inspiring me to go out and ride. Super frosty. Actually, that looks like home for me. Yeah. yeah. Is it cold at the minute, Emma? Yeah, it's flipping freezing. Is it? Frosty. Frozen mist that hangs on all the hilltops and and in the valleys. 
Oh, you make it sound it, quite, it looks quite pretty, nice, actually. It's really cold. Yeah, yeah. anyway, fair play yeah. there. So, Sam, congratulations. £75 of wiggle vouchers over to you. And then the winner. Finally, in pole position, winning this week's inspirational photo competition, we have Roland, who was riding the second Torino Nice rally. And this is taken on the Colle de Colombardo, um, which is apparently a 2.2k off road climb somewhere between Torino and Nice. That looks pretty darn cool, doesn't yeah. it? Now, inspiration perhaps not to get out and ride your bike just now, but maybe to start planning stuff for next year. That it's, looks wicked, doesn't it? Does it look pretty cool. Yeah, fair play. Well, there we go. A hundred pound wiggle voucher winging its way over to you as well. If you want to get stuck in to next week's weekly inspiration, then uh, all you've got to do is either submit an inspirational riding photo to our uploader, the link to which is in the description below, or on Instagram, which as you can see, a couple of these uh, have come from this week. The hashtag is GCN Inspiration. It's now time for cycling shorts. We'll start cycling shorts this week with some news of actual cycling shorts, which is kind of nice because Team Sky have unveiled their 2019 kit for what will be their 10th season. Can you wow. believe it? Time's gone pretty quick, hasn't mm. it? Uh, anyway, this year they will be back in black. Not exclusively black, it's like a black navy blue fade, which I've got to say I'm quite a fan of a fade oh, these great. days. Maybe yeah. it's like an 80s thing coming back. Um, anyway, ASOS have also signed on as kit partners to Team Dimension Data, although we haven't actually seen a sneak peek of that new kit yet. So Team Dimension Data going full Swiss on both kit and bikes next yeah. year, it seems. In other news, Italian brand 3T were the victims of a robbery, unfortunately, with thieves apparently drilling through a one metre thick brick wall wow. to gain access to the facility. And 20 bikes were taken, apparently. Oh. Yeah, which is pretty bad. Apparently, hopefully, covered by insurance, apart from one, which is irreplaceable because there was an Exploro custom painted by the late, great Dario Pegoretti. Oh, they must be absolutely gutted, mustn't they? Now, let it be said, if you ever get offered a bike that you think might be stolen, do not buy it. Because if you do, you are a part, a cause, in fact, of a major, major problem for us cyclists, haven't you? So, although I'm a huge advocate of buying second-hand bikes, You've got to know where it comes from. Yep, too true. Now, talking of buying stuff, though, the American chain performance bicycle recently filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And in fact, they're running liquidation sales at all of their 102 stores across the US. When you add to that the UK mega chain Evans, which recently had to be bailed out, kind of makes me wonder, do you think we're entering a new phase of bicycle retail? Well, yeah, you've got to wonder, haven't you? I mean, neither of those obviously can be called local bike shops and nor were they specialists in online retail. It's kind of going to be interesting to see how it affects us consumers, this sort of losing the, what would you call it, like the middle ground? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, anyway, change the subject slightly. Uh, here is some footage of a giant bicycle. 19 tractors, a 13 ton slurry truck, an excavator and a swarm of quad bikes drove for <laughs> 90 minutes to create that. And it's pretty amazing, I think. It is. Yeah, you'll be pleased to hear that it also won an award. I am pleased. Yep, not an eco-friendly award, unsurprisingly, no. for that fuel, but the first ever British Land Art Award. There we go. Now, before you scoff and think, British Land Art Award, Great Britain has a long and cherished history of uh, significant major land art. Take, for example, uh, the Westbury White Horse, mm -hmm. or going back to prehistoric times, remember, the Uffington White Horse, and then also this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is, um, that's quite some six pack. I <laughs> yes. wonder how much uh, artistic license or maybe wishful thinking went into that. <laughs> well, anyway, prehistoric man putting modern man to shame there with, uh, with that six pack. Uh, anyway, moving away from CERN ABBA slightly. Uh, if you watched any of the GCN highlight shows uh, over on Facebook over the summer, you'll be familiar, I'm sure, with the genius cycling statistician, Killian Kelly. Well, he has just collaborated with commentator Ned Bolting to create this. Quite frankly, one of the coolest cycling books of all time, and something that goes high on my list of things that I would like for Christmas, Emma. Uh, it is a 2018 Noted. season almanac. In here is every race result of note this year. Not just the results, but also the weather on that day. Uh, mm -hmm. Top California, stage two, Emma, 11 degrees C. Uh, sunshine and showers, five kilometer an hour, northwesterly wind. Uh, not only race results, also there's got some cool uh, essays in here from, uh, from people right. of note, bike riders, another friend of the channel, Tom Southern. And also my favorite page, 812, GP de Plue, women's historical results, 2009 and 2010, Emma Pooley puts away Mariana Voss and Emma Johansson. Two successive years. There we go. No, that was a good year. It was a while ago. Two good years. Yeah. Back to back. Yeah.
In other news, we heard that in the Netherlands, which is already, frankly, a bit of a mecca for cycling commuters, the authorities are investing a further 245 million euros in cycling infrastructure. Yeah, as if they didn't already have good enough cycling infrastructure, but oh no, we need more. I mean, the Netherlands has a pretty enviable reputation amongst countries, doesn't it? Yeah. Bike mileage outstrips car mileage in most towns and cities, but yet there is still need to keep investing. And so 15 new fast bike lanes where you get to skip out traffic lights, sounds like a winner, uh, and then also improved bike parking at stations as well. Mm, I think there's a lot that other countries could learn from that. Absolutely. But we're going to finish cycling shorts with a call to action because we, as cyclists, need to do more to convince non-cyclists to take to the roads. I mean, on their bikes, obviously. That's right, because according to the Transportation Research Record, which is, of course, the Journal of the Transportation Research Board, there is a measurable disconnect between people's perception of cycling safety versus what we actually feel when we're riding our bikes. Yeah, yeah. The disconnect, apparently, is that people riding their bikes in traffic feel safer than someone watching on would imagine, as in, people think that cycling is scarier than it actually is. So maybe we just need to encourage people to try cycling. That's right. So the GCN Convince and Make to Go Cycling campaign starts here. At possibly the worst time of year, December. Yeah, well, in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, convince your mates to go cycling. Now That's is the right. perfect time. Yeah, and, and in the Northern Hemisphere, we can just hold fire, perhaps till March. Mm, wait, uh, wait till a sunny day. Yeah, in the three month interim, just convince yourself to go cycling because uh, it's not quite as miserable in the rain as you think it is. Well, maybe you could start convincing them now. It might take three months. Good point, good point. Anyway, I think it's genuinely something we should probably think about. Yeah. Can I just interrupt the show for one second to tell you that we have got GCN coffee in the shop. How cool is that? We got to go and select the beans and the roast and there you go. Can I have a, can I have a whiff? If you have to. Oh. That does absolutely smell amazing, doesn't it? Anyway, that comes from our local legendary coffee roaster, Colonas, uh, as Emma said, hand selected mm -hmm. by us here at GCN and it is now batch number one shipping worldwide. So there you go, get your hands on that. And can I just say, Emma, <clears throat> it tastes even better out of a GCN espresso cup and saucer. Mmm, really rich. Yeah. Given that Christmas is fast approaching, there are loads of great gift ideas in the shop. I mean, our Black Friday range has ended, but nonetheless, there are loads of tasty offers. Not as tasty as the coffee, though. No, no, back. Oh, hey, hey, I want to smell. No, give it back. That was my one. Oi! This week in the tech world, we've got ourselves a new aero bike because Focus have just launched the new Azalco Max disc. And at first glance, well, it doesn't really look like an aero bike, does it? Because it's not covered in aerofoil tubing or such like. Instead, it takes a really traditional look, other than, of course, the uh, drop seat stays and that oversized head tube. Once you get up close to it, you can actually see that the tubes do actually have camtail profiles, which help in the wind transferring over those tubes a little bit easier, as well as combining two with a D-shaped seat post, which means it's gonna cheat the wind just that little bit more too, and also give you a little bit of extra comfort. And we've also got the Bike Vault Your Upgrade, which components were the most successful in 2018 World Tour, and get this, a super trick custom bike, especially made for a child. Right, now it's time for hack forward slash bod of the week. And here we go, we're gonna start out with, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, I think this could be very useful because it's time to think about cross training and strength training to get strong. Not getting your mates summer. on bikes. No, no, bad, bad time. Get indoors in the gym, get strong. And here's a cool recycling hack from Timmer DHC on Instagram. Wow, that is kind of cool. As in like, it's training for sprint training by lifting up a set of drop handlebars. Well, I'm not actually sure what they are. I thought they were for doing like back rollouts, which is about like core strength. Oh, okay. Multi-purpose. Multi potentially, yeah. Hack, are we saying then? Oh, definitely, yeah. Multi-purpose hack, fair yeah. play then. All uh, right, this was sent in by Grant Arnold from Facebook. Uh, I mean, that looks terrifying. Mm. What I what I assume Emma is going on is that they've attached about bar ends to some drop handlebars to create like a, a flat bar, but it looks like there's some brake levers. Yeah, so that you can be high up and braking when you want stability, and then get down the drops when you want to change gear. The only thing is, though, that you're going to really struggle to fit through any narrow gap, and you might take out unsuspecting people. Well, I mean, that's what mountain bikers deal with all the time. They <laughs> struggle with gaps, and they often take out spectators, but I'm worried about using your bar ends to brake from when all you've got is a flimsy little clamp holding it to the handlebars. 
That's a very good point. Anyway, well made. I think that one's a bodge. Yeah. Uh, right, next up, this one from Alistair Dennis. I mean, it, it's there, isn't it? Held in place in front of your stem, like a like an out front mount should be. It's but just that there are so many ways of doing it, and it seems like an unnecessary hack yeah. if it even is one. I I think unnecessary hack is probably the best way of describing this. Yeah. I've Does that make it a bodge? Yeah. Why not just get a get get a get a mount? Get, just mount. get a get a mount. <laughs> honestly. Uh, next up, we've got David Malander, arm warmer turned sweat guard. Uh, he's just used a, some scissors and some Velcro. I think that's brilliant. I think that's, that's brilliant. Absolutely actually, absolutely brilliant. Important on your steel derosa there as well. If yeah. you're anything like me on the trainer, then uh, that thing will dissolve in a sea I, of salt water. I think the sweat catcher <laughs> is a hack, but I think using your steel derosa on the indoor trainer is a bodge. Like oh really? Well, like the rust, the rust risk. Well, that's why he's got his sweat guard. Yeah, but I mean, it's not waterproof, is it? It's going to absorb some of it. If that was me, there'd, there'd still be a puddle underneath. Yeah, okay, oh, me too. I'm quite sweaty. Right then, next up then, we've got this uh, Alvi from Helsinki. Uh, this is a mud guard slash fender hack slash bodge, uh, but I like it. So yeah. uh, on a frame with massive clearance, in order to get his mud guard to fit nice and closely, he's used an old brake caliper mounting bolt to get it to work perfectly. That is neat, Emma, and that Fits the bill. It, very niche, but beautifully executed. That's yeah. the that's the perfect hack. Beautiful. And it's something I never thought that loads of clearance would be a problem for mud guards. You'd kind of assume that great, you've got space for mud guards, but no, he was getting dirty feet apparently. So there you go. He's oh my solved word! It. Well, there we go. Uh, a hack Beautiful. to solve your dirty feet. What yeah. about this one from Robert Amalard? Yeah, this this is. Uh, we're not really sure what you could carry on that. Well, you'd hang stuff off there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe carrier maybe bags. Yes. Or or like cut grass or something or. How do you hang cut grass of a nail, Emma? In sheaves. <laughs> I see. <laughs> there we go. Sheaves of wheat can be hung off <laughs> your new pannier rack. Uh, right then, anyway, we're going to finish with a festive one. Yep. Uh, Mark Hagen getting in here early. He said, tubeless ain't just for tyres. I love having a tree right after Thanksgiving, but it's usually brown and dry by the time Christmas is here. So I use my tubeless sealant injector to keep it hydrated this year. Look, as you can see, what amazing hack. Bit of drilling, bit of injecting, Presumably that's, water into your, the roots of your Christmas tree. That's really clever. And uh, I, yeah, I discovered this weekend that tubeless sealant is not all it's cracked up to be, especially if you use it on tires not desire, designed to be tubeless ready. Yeah, I think that might have been the problem. The sealant had a bit too much of a job to do. Yeah. But it did stain the car park. It stained the didn't car it? park and on my hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it sealed some things, yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Can I just can I just interrupt a quick shout out? If anyone knows how to remove dried tubeless sealant from frames and wheels. Can you let me know in the comment section, please? Because because I've got some stainage and uh, it's, <laughs> it's really upsetting me. That would be an awkward looking stain. Yeah. Now it's time for Caption of the Week. Chance to win an amazing shiny GCN bottle. That's right. This is last week's photo. Thank goodness we're going to see the back of this one, We Emma. did indeed see the back of it. We Probably did, better yeah. than seeing the front. I oh, remember. it was. Uh, it was. Anyway, we had some absolutely Brilliant, brilliant entries this week. So much so, in fact, that we're going to read a few out before we get to our winner. Uh, Sean Tarras, uh, Simon still manages to ride despite suffering from a serious case of hemiloids. See what he did good. there? I like that nice. one. And then we've got uh, Mr. Philly Chris. Proud to announce that Dan Lloyd is the new face of Ass Saver. <laughs> there we go. It's a good idea for Ass Saver, isn't it? Mm. Stick people's faces on the back. Yeah. Uh, Ian Stevens, Dan gets a cracking view of size ride across London. Like he did just, there, just what he wanted, yep. Yep, and, and then, then the winner. Yep, the winner from Neil Moss. Uh, the caption is, and I think you better start it off. Loads of people complimented me on my physique. Uh, they said physique, Sai. As in the saddle. That's pretty good. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, there we go. Practice your rundown. I, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably. Brilliant. Do, Absolutely yeah. brilliant. There we go. Anyway, people know. Yeah. So, uh, this week's uh, what's our what's our photo this week? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I didn't Emma. see it actually. What have you chosen? This is this week's photo. This is a snapshot taken from uh, Sunday's video where Emma does her first ever cyclocross race. Why did you have to choose that photo? There are loads of photos were actually riding, and you chose the one time I didn't make it over the top. Like seriously, don't don't believe this photo. Like you actually given me an idea for a caption. Emma gets cross. Oh, but of course I'm cross. Like I made it over the tabletop like yeah, five times out of six, and you you took the, you took the photo from the time I didn't make it over. Emma clearly gets cross. Do you actually get cross now? As in get cross? <laughs> no, I was rubbish, but I really enjoyed it. It was it was so much fun, but I didn't get it. No, I was absolutely useless. It was brilliant. I was brilliant actually, to watch. Emma did great. I'd uh, actually quicker running. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
it was a tough race actually, wasn't it? And there was quite a bit of running. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked now, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So if you fancy a chance at winning a GCN Camelback water bottle, please have a go at capturing this photo of Emma. To be fair, you didn't need to say that you were just about to deck it off the side of a uh, of a tabletop. You could have been about to launch a massive tail whip, which everyone was probably thinking that was about to happen. Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah, that was probably it. Now, before we come on to what's coming up this week on the channel, we thought we'd go through some of our favourite comments from last week's videos and starting with a comment on the top 10 memorable uh, moments of 2018 where Ian Nancola says, shame on you. No mention of Simon Yates' Welter to Espana. Stoked some passions, didn't it, that video? Yeah. Uh, inevitably, if you've only got 10 memorable moments, yeah, then you're going to lose some. Yeah, but, I, uh, I think you know, it's good to stoke debate. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. yeah. It was quite memorable. I'd argue, actually, that Simon Yates blowing up at the Giro yeah. was more memorable. Definitely, but, I would uh, say. That was anyway. A, yeah, that will go down in cycling history, I think. Yeah, yeah, we'll win it. Uh, right, how about on how to plan your adventure? Uh, good one here from Colross Harbour. Uh, with reference to me suggesting that Google Street View was a good resource, he said, if it's on Street View, that diminishes the adventure. Fair point, yeah, that's but... Yeah, see the point, yeah. Yeah, but then again, Google Street View gets everywhere. Yeah, if, if that counts out any adventure, then you know your, your options are going to be very limited. Some some countries are going to be completely off limited. <laughs> Either you just get mountain biking, which is totally fair enough. Uh, and then uh, Lee A. Dorney said, uh, "Great video, thank you very much." Uh, but what the hell is on your wall? Is it a chest hair brush or a marmite encrusted brick? Someone else uh, asked. I think it was David Pratt asked whether or not it was an old uh, washing up sponge. And it, fair enough, what not my it? choice of decoration. I think it's just art. Oh right, it was art. Yeah. yeah. Then we had some comments on uh, John's Saitama Criterion video, which uh, one from Peter Finney, which is Crackergate, so awkward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that, that cracker, you know, a lot of viewers I think were a bit upset about the treatment of the cracker. So uh, Alan also commented, RIP cracker thing, may you be forever loved. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, should we put a clip in? We, Let's have a clip yeah. of John at the Saitama Crit. Oh, hey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh no! We're okay, man. That's okay. Oh, one more, one more. One more? Oh no. I can't believe I did that after all that. Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got three training sessions that you can fit into just 30 minutes plus deep section wheels versus crosswinds. Ollie explains the do's and the don'ts. It had to be Ollie, not Emma, by the way, because. Uh, in your book, deep section wheels versus crosswinds, it's just only don'ts, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, one of the don'ts is don't be small. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> then on Thursday, we've got some top Christmas gifts that we would actually like for Christmas, as opposed to novelty jumpers or yet more chocolate at a time of the year. When well, I... uh, chocolate, I don't mind. Novelty jumpers, always a bit annoying, because yeah. then you've got to wait a but year I'll... to wear it again, haven't you? Yeah, but chocolate, I, think I just feel like I always eat too much at Christmas anyway. Well, don't need enough. more encouragement. Friday, ask GCN anything. Yeah, and then on Saturday, can you get fit on an e-bike? And also, can Lloydy claim back a KOM off himself from uh, back when he was lean and fit? Uh, that is on Saturday, as I said. And then on Sunday, it's Emma's first cyclocross race. Yes! It was fun. I'm not sure it was that exciting. It's good. It's a good watch, that one. Uh, and then Monday, of course, is the GCN Racing News Show. And then on Tuesday, it's the GCN Show. Again, brilliant. We are getting towards the end of the show now, but we still have time for Extreme Corner. And this week, it's David Yakuza showing that there is still a future for public hire bikes, even if it's not the future that you might have imagined. Fair play. Yeah, pretty gnarly, but I'm a little bit hurt that you didn't want to use any of the footage from my cross race. We are saving that, Emma, for Sunday's video. Oh, yes. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to head over to the shop where you can get some delicious man and coffee. Stuff <laughs> that hasn't been sniffed to death by, uh, by Emma and I myself. I don't think it damages it to sniff it, does it? P sucking the flavour out, maybe? Sorry. We'll I'll probably do it. some experiments and uh, see what that one actually tastes like now. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, yes, if you uh, have enjoyed watching this, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch another video, then do make sure you check out uh, the recent one about cycling's body weight obsession. How light is right.